Hi there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to make a histogram with the TI-8384 plus family of graphing calculators. And for demonstration purposes, we'll use the 42 scores, uh, test 2 scores for the males that are found um, at the very beginning of Chapter 3. So we have this table of data, uh, very unpleasant, hard to make any sense out of it. In the book, we first made a frequency table and then a histogram, but we're going to go straight to the histogram with the TI so that we end up with a histogram that looks like this over here, right? Okay, but to get started, we, um, we need to take this data right here, these 42 scores, and we need to enter that into the TI. Um, and that's sort of a time-consuming task, but if we were to do that, I've already done it, but if we were to do that, Come over here to the TI, you press the STAT button, and the default opening settings is under Edit and 1. That's actually what we want to do. We want to edit a list. So we're going to hit Enter there. I have three lists going. Um, list 1, List 2, and List 3. Those are from um, other demonstrations. List 3 has our data in it. List 3 has 84, 93, 64, 37. So it's the same list. It's 42 long. You have to hit type each number in and hit enter. Um, so that takes a while. Uh, but I've already done that and it is in list 3 which is worth remembering later. Okay, so uh, let's make a histogram. So we're going to go up to here to stat plot which is right above the y equals button um, below the graphing screen. So I hit second, stat plot, I'll go to plot one. You can choose any of these, but I'll turn on plot one. But they're all off, which is good. If any of these are on, you don't want more than one on because then you'll wind up with um, overlapping graphs, and that's probably not what you want. So I'll I'll hit enter for plot one, and I will turn it on. Right, the on is blinking, so if I hit enter, it's now on. And I scroll down to type. That is a the first one is a um, scatter plot and then a line plot, and then the next one is a histogram. I'm getting over there by just hitting this right arrow key. So the histogram is blinking. I'm going to hit enter. It's good to go. My number of lists down here changed to just one list. I'm going to do a um, histogram from the list of data. Now it's already set at L3 because I've actually already done that. But if it wasn't, I'd go down to X list and I would hit second Three. That gets me access to this L3 in blue above the 3. So it'd go second, 3, and L3 would come up. Um, but it was already there. And, and you're going to keep frequency at 1. Do not even change that, right? And now the temptation would be to just hit graph right away. And, and I'll show you what happens if you do. Um, so I'll, I'll hit graph. And it's not a very pleasant graph, right? It's sort of strange looking. And actually, if the window isn't set correctly, you might even get an error. So what you do actually before you hit graph, or you can hit graph and do it after, is to click on this window button right below the graphing screen, window. The x min, and, the, and these values um, represent things slightly different than in a standard y equals f of x plot. x min for histogram should be a number below, but not too far below, the lowest data value in here. And I actually have a little cheat sheet over here. I actually know that 30 is below the lowest one. I think there's a 33 in there somewhere. So I'll make x min 30, right? x max will be 100. I think the max is like a 99, but we'll go up to 100, so it's nice and even. x scale, this is where the difference is. The x scale is actually the class width. So if I'm starting at 30, and I have an x scale of 3, it's going to go 30, 33, 34 to 37. So I'm going to go up by 10. So I'm going to change x scale to 10 so that I go 30 to 39, or 30 to 40, 40 to 50. That way my um, that way I get a, the classes that look like this. Um, y min on a bar graph is 0. That's good. So we want the axis to start at 0. And y max is 100 right now. That's kind of high. Um, suppose I change it down to, say, 50. Right. And I actually know the max is 10, but suppose I started with 50 because I didn't know how many there were. Um, now, whenever I hit graph, it looks much better, right? And we see that that y max of 50 is, is too high. So I go back to window, change that 50 to a 10. So it might take some trial and error to get the correct um, 
y max. Now I hit graph. That looks very good. It looks just like the histogram um, on our page here, right? Same shape. Um, unfortunately, what you can't see is um, the, the axis labels and the, and the and the tick marks. Like how how high is that? Um, so if you want to trace through, if you want to see that, because right now you get a, an idea for the shape, but you don't get an actual idea for the frequencies or the or the, the quantities. So if I go to trace. There's a button down here called Trace. I hit Trace. And the first one, by the way, this top left is Plot 1. It's working with List 3. But down here, you can see it's blinking. It's underneath these, these words. This is min 30, max less than 40. So this is the class 30 to 40, and the frequency is 1. If I move over, the class 40 to 50 has a frequency of 3. Move over another one. The class of 50 to 60 has a frequency of 5, and you can check out the classes and the actual heights by um, tracing through this histogram. All right? It's not as um, easy to read as, say, a histogram with um, other software, but it certainly gets the information, and you can certainly see what the distribution looks like. Um, so that's it. That is making a histogram with the TI-8384 graphing calculators. Bye.